This video is on solving an advanced equation by graphing f of x is equal to g of x. Some of you aren't familiar with the function notation yet, and we're going to talk more about it tomorrow. But for right now, when you see something like this, you read it f of x, and this one would be g of x. And we use f and g to name functions in terms of x. For right now, know that that f of x is just there in place of the y. And the same thing for g of x. But now we can use f or g so that we know that one function is different from another function. So don't let the f of x and g of x throw you. You don't have to do anything with it. It's there in place of the y. So this is like y equals 2x, and this one is like y equals negative 3x plus 5. We're going to learn how to find a solution using this concept where one function is equal to another one. So let's say we're given these two functions and we want to find the solution to the system of equations because that is what it is, right? We have y equals 2x and y equals negative 3x plus 5. If we want to find a solution to those two equations, we're really looking for the point of intersection. And so we would graph these two functions and often you're going to be asked in terms of functions rather than solve the system, you might see instructions like find where f of x equals g of x. What that's asking you is where these two functions are equal. What point do they have in common? And you can graph each of them. The first one has a y-intercept of 0 and a slope of 2. And let's see how good I can be at this. And the second one has a y-intercept of 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and a slope of negative 3, so down 3, right 1. Notice I do it a couple of times, so I get a decent line. And I hope that you can see that my two lines crossed right there. That is my point of intersection. So if I was solving a system of equations, I would give an x and a y value. In this case, the point to 1. But if they're asking where f of x equals g of x, they're saying where is the one y equal to whoops, the other y. And so all we need is the x value of this point of intersection. And so x is equal to 1 is the solution to finding where f of x is equal to g of x. So in this first graph, I have two functions graphed for you. Let's call the green one f of x and the brownish one g of x. What is the solution? Where does f of x equal g of x? Well, you look at the point of intersection and you look at the x value. And x is 2, and so that is the solution. You try this one. Pause the video if you need to. I hope you got x is equal to 3. Notice the point of intersection is right here, and at this point, x is equal to 3. All right, that seems so easy that you're not sure you think you're missing something. We use this to solve an equation, often an equation that we wouldn't be able to solve by hand or that we don't know how to solve by hand. And so if we're given an equation like this, which is a fairly simple equation, and most of you could actually do this by hand, let's say you don't know how, or you don't remember how, to solve this algebraically. So our steps are going to make one side of the equation equal to f of x. And so I will take this 
and I'll say that that's f of x. And for some of you, we did this just a little bit on Friday, but we didn't call it f of x and g of x. Notice that don't get too hung up on this notation. And we're going to call this side g of x. And so now I have two equations. Remember, f of x and g of x just mean y. So the first one is y equals 2x minus 1, and the red one is y equals 4x plus 3. The next step is to graph both of the equations and then give the x value of the point of intersection. Let's take a look. This is an easy task when you're using your graphing calculator. Make sure that you pick one equation and call it y1, and that goes, the 2x minus 1 would go there, and the other one would be y2. It doesn't matter which one is which. You just have to know which one you've put in which place. I tend to make the left side y1 and the right side y2 because it's the order they come in. Okay. So once you do that, you're looking on your graph at a point of intersection, and it's very hard to read on the graph. And so we look and see that it's here, but I can tell you that if you go to your table, remember at the point of intersection, the, um, the graphs are going to have the same x and the same y. And if you look at this row, x is negative 2, and y for both graphs are negative 5. That's the point, right? The point that they have in common. You've solved problems like this when you did systems of equations. The point is that we need just the x value because we're solving this equation, and this equation doesn't have a y in it. We're using y only to look for where they're the same and then we're giving the x value where they're the same. So x is negative 2. Step 4 says to go ahead and plug that x into your original equation. Let's make sure it works. And since we picked a simple one, I think you can easily do that. If you make x negative 2, if this is the correct solution, then this plugged in with a negative 2 for the x should absolutely come out to a true statement. Well, 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Minus 1 is negative 5. Let's look at the right side of the equation. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. Plus 3 is negative 5. Those are absolutely equal. My solution is correct. Now, it might be faster if you were doing this one by hand, but remember, there are more complicated ones. This method is fantastic for advanced equations that you wouldn't otherwise know how to solve. So if you take the left side of the equation and you make it f of x, and the right side and make it g of x, and of course we're putting them in for y1 and y2, and we graph those, we get fancy graphs like these. And so you'll see that this is the first graph you get, and I do want you to pause the video and make sure that you get the same graph. Now you can use the intersection feature on your graph to uh, make guesses, remember, on the first curve and on the second curve, and then it asks you for a guess for the solution, and you put your cursor about where the intersection is. And once you enter through those three things, you will see an x value and a y value. The exact, or close to exact, places or place that these two lines cross. If you look on the table, you'll notice it's not that easy to see because we have to have x's. We can see that the real point of intersection is approximately 1.15 for the x, but I don't have a 1.15. I even told my table to count up by 0.5s, by halves instead, to try and get closer. But you can see that here my y's aren't the same, and here my y's definitely aren't the same. 
All I know is that it's somewhere between those. And of course it is, but the only way to find that answer exactly in the calculator is to use this intersection function. And you get it by going to the calc button. We're going to practice these in class, so I don't want you to get um, too hung up on the use of the calculator because you're going to learn how to do that better in class. But make sure that you can get this same graph on your graphing calculator.